how long should you abstain from ejaculating before having sex to ideally conceive and have a viable embryo. And so when they've looked at these studies, there's been a couple of meta-analyses. Now, meta-analyses are, are taking all the studies that have looked at abstinence and its impact on sperm quality and taking all those studies together and seeing if truly when you combine all the data from all these studies, are you still seeing an effect? In the first systematic review, they saw 17 studies. And in that 17 studies, they generally did absence up to 14 days in a variety of studies. And what they found was that there was a significant increase in semen volume for those who had longer abstinence periods. Now, in the other systematic review, they saw the same thing. They looked at 30 studies and they found, again, an increase in semen volume as you increase the length of abstinence. But the kicker here is they looked at the rate of change. What was the greatest increase in semen volume during that period. And the greatest overall increase was 11.9% per day in the first four days of abstinence. So it seems like the, the majority of the semen volume increase occurs within the first four to five days. 